Hello everyone, welcome to City Daily number 37. We've got something a little bit different for you today. Uh, I'm uh, joining you in conversation with a really good friend of mine, uh, Michael Arnold, all the way from South Africa. Uh, I've known Michael, I think, for about probably over 20 years. He was uh, a teacher in my school, he was my chaplain, and, uh, and the person who, who led me to the Lord uh, many, many years ago. Uh, so he's been a real uh, kind of spiritual father and encouragement to me over the years. And we were chatting the other day and I thought, hey, it would be great to, to share uh, some of his uh, experiences with you guys. Um, so first of all, welcome, Michael. It's great to have you uh, with us uh, at City Thank Church. You. Thanks so much. Um, tell us a little bit from your perspective. Like we saw quite a remarkable move of God in my school, you know, well over a hundred uh, kids coming to know the Lord in groups. Like just... Yeah, how do you remember that from your perspective? Well, um, it was uh, uh, a wonderful opportunity coming to uh, an English school. And uh, the headmaster and his wife were, were strong Christians. But there weren't many uh, Christian teachers in the school. And I think they battled. Um, and so we arrived. It was, it was difficult to begin with uh, because... Um, First of all, the staff weren't particularly friendly to begin with. Uh, and English pupils were very disconcerting because you guys didn't greet us. Um, you know, we were used to polite good morning, sir, and so on in South Africa. Um, and things gradually began to get better. But the grant, to it, I don't think the English pupils at, at Claysmore had actually really heard the gospel. I might be wrong, but. But when we, um, when I started uh, with the evidence for the Christian faith, that seemed to start making an impact. And then uh, I was fortunate enough to have one period a week uh, as a chaplain's period. Um, and that was when I could do this teaching. And um, slowly pupils began to respond. I remember you came into uh, my RE class as a, I gather a 14 year old atheist. Yeah, that's I right. You, I, think, I think you told me your parents were atheists. And you, you said subsequently that you used to argue with me, but I, I don't remember that. But halfway through your second year, uh, I, I just sensed that God was doing something. And I thought I'd fly a kite as you left the classroom. So I stopped you and said, um, Have you ever thought of giving your life to Jesus? And you said, Yes. And I said, uh, would you like to? Yes. And I said, when? And you said, now. And I, I, I said, I don't think between lessons is a, a good idea. Come and see me this afternoon. And I remember when I prayed with you to give your life to the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit, you couldn't receive tongues for three weeks because every time I prayed with you, you laughed. And uh, right. it was the laughter of, of as, as uh, you, uh, you probably, I knew you hadn't heard of the Toronto Blessing, and, uh, and it was very genuine, and, uh, and it was wonderful. And uh, yeah, then I think I encourage you to join the cell group, if you remember. Right, we must have had, I think, about a dozen cell groups at the end, which was, yeah, amazing, remarkable. You, you mentioned kind of, you had that sense from God that something was going on in my life and in people's lives, like... Obviously, you've, you've worked in quite a few schools over the years and, and, you know, really seen God move. You know, I don't know how many hundred uh, young people kind of come into the Lord. Like, what, what is that sense for you in terms of the leading of the Spirit? Like, the Bible talks about being led by the Spirit. Like, it, what does that mean to you? Like, how has that been important for what you've done over the years? And Well, I, when, I, when I came to Real Faith um, as a 34-year-old schoolmaster in South Africa at uh, one of the leading uh, sort of private schools, um, St. Andrew's College in Grandstown, um, founded in 1855, actually, isn't that remarkable? And um, founded by Bishop John Armstrong, who, who was the first bishop of Grandstown, and who paid with his bishop, bishopric with his, his life in the sense that um, he was not a strong man. But he saw it as a, a a powerhouse of, for, for, the, for the gospel. And um, I came to faith through two of my own pupils, uh, which is quite a story, but it was quite a dramatic conversion. Um, 
I remember the headmaster giving me a promotion I'd wanted and, um, and he steadfastly refused to give it to me. And when I'd come to Christ, he gave it to me. And, um, I, I knew Jesus was involved with this immediately. So I said to him, well, if you've seen any change in my life, and he interrupted me with the words, yes, well, I think we've all seen that. So it was quite marked. And I seemed to hear Jesus really clearly. Um, and um, I think in, in future years, um, well, in fact, quite quickly, uh, I think I read a book by John White called The Fight, which is a wonderful book of practical handbook for Christian living. Yes, great. And he said, he said, oh, you know, it. yeah, it's a wonderful book. You gave it to me. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> well, it was the best Christian book I had. And he said, if you want to read a book of the Bible, uh, just find out some basic details, like who wrote it and when they wrote it and so on. And, and then just read through the book. And I started with John's Gospel. And he said, just read through it and, and jot down anything that strikes you. And then read it again and again and again. And something began to emerge. And it was Jesus's insistence that he only said what he heard the Father saying. And he only did what he saw the Father doing. And he was obviously chose to model for us somebody in complete submission to the will of the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he was our prime example. Uh, I don't think he did perform his miracles out of his own power as the Son of God. I think he was he was showing us how to live, not in the sense that we must try and imitate his holiness, because that's doomed to frustration, but in in the sense that we too are, are, are to live surrendered to God and, and led by the Spirit. And when I and initially when I asked him. Well, he told me to do something, and, and um, you know, uh, I can remember one case. Quite later, we were at a, a vineyard conference in Joburg, and we'd taken the evening off and gone to a restaurant. Um, it was John Wimber said that's a very godly thing to do in the middle of a conference. He said you you need a break, so we 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 took him up on that, and. Uh, there were two errors in the bill, and I sent the bill back, and then it came back with one error. And eventually the manager arrived and uh, said he was sorry and hoped we'd come again. And I said, well, it's not likely because we live 600 miles away. And we got into conversation. Long story short, I told him how Jesus had healed me of addictive cigarette smoking from 40 a day to nothing in three days. And uh, he said, that's me. And uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I smoke 60 a day. And at that point, I, I heard in my mind something I really didn't particularly want to hear. And that was, those were the words of, of Jesus saying, ask him if he'd like you to pray for him. And it's like, no, the rest <laughs> of Gotta love those moments. So I, said, so I said to him, you wouldn't like me to pray for you, would you? Which is a question desperately looking for the answer, no. <laughs> if you trained as a Latinist, you know, it would start with the, the Latin word num. Definitely looking for the answer no. He said, yes, I would, and shut his eyes. By the stage, the whole restaurant's listening. So I said, I said in a voice I, I knew he could hear, but I hope nobody else could. Um, and uh, uh, I said, Jesus, you, 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 you healed me. Please, won't you do do something for this man. I can't remember exactly what I said. And he opened his eyes and said, something's happened. And I said, really? And he said, I said, what? He said, I don't know, but something's happened. I discovered later that my wife, Jill, had been praying for a divine appointment and she didn't tell me. <laughs> and I said, Sorry, Amazing. Why didn't the Lord tell her? <laughs> but she'd never smoked. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's one example. But to be honest, Jamie, I'm not sure I hear the, the Lord that clearly and as, as, as clearly as in those first few years. And I'm, I'm not actually sure why. Um, I, I, suppose, I suppose the seasons in your life change. Um, I, um, you know, I would love to get back into school chaplaincy. I mean, I've just spent eight days at Hatfield Christian School in Pretoria you know, teaching in, in the classroom at the age of 75, 
and, uh, I cannot understand why they hoof you out at 65 or whatever. But um, I think I think maybe what God is calling me to do at the moment is right. So. Well, listen, we've got to finish, but will you, will you just pray for us? Like, I think you've expressed something of that hunger, really, to, to hear God and be led by him again. And I know a, a lot of us can really resonate with that. So, yeah, would you just be, be all right to pray for, for everyone yeah, watching? Sure. And then we'll wrap sure. up. Sure. Father, thank you for Jamie. Thank you for City Church. I pray, Father, that you would pour out your spirit on all of us. Excellent. especially in these last days that we might hear your voice that we might just make ourselves available to you and allow you to pray your prayers through us pray that you would lead us to the people who want you Lord one has a sense that the time is short and, and things are urgent but I pray for City Church that you would bless them that you would give them a, a hunger for you, yes, a hunger Father. for your voice and the incarnate of your spirit, that they might walk in complete surrender to you. And I pray this in and through the merits, the death and resurrection of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Michael, thank you so much. It's always such an encouragement to, to talk with you and thank you for agreeing to come on and share with us. Guys, that's all for today. We're back at half past 12 tomorrow, so we'll see you soon.